Many of you have already played Breath of the Wild, I can almost guarantee it, but just in case you're that tiny little percentage who hasn't, let me tell you how fantastic this game is right now. So Breath of the Wild came out alongside the Nintendo Switch's launch in March of 2017, and something super interesting is that the attach rate to Breath of the Wild was 103% or around there, meaning people are buying more Breath of the Wild copies than they are Switches. I know, insane. Why do people need two copies? Nobody really knows, but we're gonna get into how insane this game is right now. So, in this week's weekly Wednesday review, I will look back at a game that changed the face of gaming and open worlds forever. Pre-launch, Breath of the Wild had a troubled production. It was originally announced in 2014 as Zelda Wii U and was anticipated to come the following year. Then it was delayed and delayed again until finally we saw a huge blowout for the game at E3 2016. Slated to come out in 2017 as a launch title with their newest system. Now, Breath of the Wild did release cross-platform on the Wii U, and since there was such a shortage of Nintendo Switch systems at the beginning, it sold surprisingly well. However, specifically on the Switch, this game has gone on to be the best-selling Zelda game of all time, and it was many people's first introduction to the franchise. For me, it wasn't my first Zelda experience. Actually, I had that on the Wii U with the double pack of Twilight Princess and Wind Waker, but I didn't get super into those games, so what Breath of the Wild did do is suck me into the franchise and make me want to beat and play every other Zelda game. The game was monumental at launch, not only because it came with a brand new system, but because it changed the face of the open world landscape. Before this, open world games often felt bare and repetitive, but in Breath of the Wild, every corner you turn, you are greeted with something new. Some encounter, some type of collectible, something to do is always abundant in this game, and that is what so many open world games have taken and implemented into their newest game. And it's what's making the open world format feel so much better than it initially was. Before Breath of the Wild, I was not the biggest fan of open world. Why? You're like, Josie, what the heck? That's like the most fun genre. For me, I prefer to have games that always keep me busy, things that I can always be doing in games. Mario, for example, you always collect that star at the end. You always have that objective. I feel lost oftentimes in open world, and I have a video coming about that very soon, but Breath of the Wild absolutely destroyed my feelings of lost and just gave me feelings of wonder and desire to explore. Something else in Breath of the Wild that really keeps the gameplay fresh is the weapon breaking. Now, I know this is a pretty divisive thing, but for me personally, I really enjoyed it because it really kept me as a player on my toes. I was always ready for a weapon to break and once your weapon breaks and you defeat like one of the Moga the Bokoblins or something like that, you can just take their weapon and then you can use that. Yes, it is a bummer that the weapons from the Divine Beast end up breaking. I don't totally love that, but at the same time, in just general, the weapon breaking I do feel keeps the gameplay so fresh and keeps me always on my toes, ready to be prepared to lose it at any point time. So the sole ambition of this game is actually insane. It was originally described by so many as, oh, you see that mountain over there? You can climb it. That was unheard of at the time. Something so open and explorative has never, had never really been done in gaming before. And now we get a new open world game almost every other month. But those games now would not be where they are without the blueprint of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The gameplay of Breath of the Wild is fun, exciting, and frustrating at times but always engrossing. You quickly get a glider, which helps you easily navigate through Hyrule. You then get all the rune powers like Magnesis, Stasis, the round and square bombs, Cryonosis, and the camera. So each of these powers will help you solve puzzles in the different shrines and defeat enemies throughout the rest of the game. On top of the rune powers, you are also given powers after you defeat every divine beast that will mostly aid you in combat. For instance, when you pull out your shield, you get a little extra protection or you can get revived. Yes, weapons break in this game, even the master sword breaks and has to recharge, which I will admit does suck sometimes, but at the same time, I never feel so hindered by this that it isn't fair. It allows for the combat to always be fresh, because so often after you defeat an enemy, your weapon breaks and you need a new one. Well, the bad guy you just killed dropped his weapon, so now you can use that. See what I'm saying? It keeps you as a player engaged at all times. Another thing with combat is the use of the bow, which is done to absolute perfection. It is one of the few uses of gyro in the game, and because you use the stick to get close to perfect and then use the gyro to finalize it, it's just so fantastic and buttery smooth to use. So there's a ton of things to do at all times in and out of combat. There's not traditional dungeons in this game, which is a gripe tons of people have. And after playing a few other Zelda games and experiencing their dungeons, I absolutely understand where this criticism is coming from. But let's talk about what we have as our dungeon substitute in Breath of the Wild. Shrines. 
These are often mini dungeons filled with puzzles or combat, and wow, I love these things. Oftentimes you have so much fun actually finding the shrines themselves. Sometimes you can be flying with a glider and see them, but other times there's this pseudo puzzle where you might need to light all the torches in a square, and once you do so, a new shrine will surface from underground. The Divine Beast are the thing in this game that most resembles traditional dungeons, and honestly, it's the only part of the game I did not love. These are still fun in their own way, but some of the puzzles are so weirdly complicated that I would get stuck for days. Now, this could be because Breath of the Wild was my first ever real Zelda game, so this is probably completely user error, but in my experience, the Divine Beasts, while cool, were an absolute slog to get through. However, once you do get through them, the story element you get was enough to entice me to keep defeating these Divine Beasts and put the story together. The story, I thought, was very good, and especially because as a player, you are allowed to do any of the Divine Beasts in any order. But just like the lack of dungeons and weapon breaking, there is definitely a lot of criticism surrounding the story. Personally, I think of the story more as a secondary thing, enticing me to continue my journey alongside a great gameplay loop. Also, this is kind of a side note, but the amount of wildlife in this game is absolutely amazing. They captured their movement so beautifully, and the fact that you can feed the horses and the dogs is just so much fun. The character interactions are fantastic as well. You meet some pretty goofy, then serious, then crazy people all throughout your journey, and the writing for these NPCs is amazing. It gives so much character to a world that was already oozing with it. You can also cook in this game, which is almost vital, especially if you're fighting some of the big monsters because it will restore health, and if you make it correctly, you can also boost your stats or give you temporary extra heart, which is really dope. Throughout your journey, there are also things called Koroks hiding absolutely everywhere. Basically, you find these by looking around in the overworld and saying, oh my gosh, that rock over there? That looks a little bit out of place. Well, if you pick it up, chances are it's gonna be a Korok seed. And if you get enough of these, you can upgrade your inventory space and do a bunch of other things with them. And it's really, really cool. And entices you to really fully explore the world. There are 999 Koroks in total, and I myself have not gotten all of them. I did have a friend who did it, and it is absolutely an insane journey. I do not know how you do that. He claims to not do it without a guide, which is just crazy. Crazy. But anyways, this might be the longest video on my channel yet, and if it is, I apologize. But if you're still here, that's dope. Stick around to see my final thoughts at the very end because it's crazy. For many people, Breath of the Wild is their favorite game of all time. At the very least, it's often people's favorite Zelda game of all time. It's perfected the open world format, paving the way for Red Dead Redemption 2, Immortals Phoenix Rising, and recently Pokemon Legends Arceus on top of so many others. Nintendo, you really created a masterpiece with this game, and you brought to life a 40-year-old franchise, and you captured the hearts of so many fans. Why do you think people are going so crazy over the sequel to Breath of the Wild and demanding to see at it every single presentation? Well, Nintendo, it's because you mastermind the perfect game in so many people's eyes. And in my eyes, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a perfect 10 out of 10 game. In the off chance you haven't already played it, please do. It is absolutely amazing. You're going to love it. Yes, there's some gripes that people have, but you don't know what you really think about this game until you play it. So if you have played it, let me know down in the comments below. And if you plan on picking it up, let me know down below as well. And if you really enjoy the video, please go down below and give it a good old thumbs up. Looks just like this. If you enjoyed my style of video or what I do here, please don't forget to subscribe because I have something so sick planned for 100 subscribers and you're not gonna wanna miss out on it. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Josie, this has been a blast, and I will see you all later.